In this video, we are going to talk about why did Jesus say that in me you have peace, but in the world you have tribulation. And what does it mean that he said in Matthew chapter uh, 10, verse 34, that do not think that I have come to bring the peace, but a sword on earth. Hello everyone, we are so excited that we are back. As uh, some of you know that in the last couple of months, uh, we weren't posting any YouTube videos. As we mentioned in the announcement video, uh, that we have been uh, really working on getting some courses out, some teachings about the main subject that people, that Christianity, like Christians have been asking us so many times. And, and that's why in the last couple of months we were really busy. We are working in our Bible college. So in the next few months, you're going to see a lot of changes that are coming in our ministry. And we are so excited about it. Um, so let's get us started, let's get us started. Uh, yeah. with the first question. So I guess maybe we should start with this question. Uh, that uh, some, like many people have asked, uh, it is in John chapter 16 that Jesus said that in me um, you're going to have peace, but uh, th there will be tribulation also uh, in the world, but take heart and uh, that I have overcome the world. So, um, you know, sometimes, um, you know, when we come to Jesus, uh, maybe there's a wrong understanding that mm -hmm. we have and this understanding is like the moment we come to Jesus okay it's the end of tribulation it's the end of everything and all of a sudden everything is great which is true but people ask the question so why did Jesus say that why does what does it mean that in, it's going you're going to have tribulation mm -hmm. in the world so um, maybe we should take a look at the sure. John chapter 16 and it is in verse 33 and I'm just going to read it, and Masood, maybe you want to explain for us a sure. little about that. Okay, uh, John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace in the world. Um, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All right, so um, two things. Uh, he speaks concerning tribulation and uh, peace. So... At the same time, he says, tribulation is in the world, but peace is in me. So we have to realize that he talks mm -hmm. about the world and in me, or in the world and in me. So he's separating the two from one another. Now, why is he saying this? What does he mean by the world? Mm -hmm. uh, the world is anything apart from Christ. It's not actually uh, apart from Christianity. It's apart, it's apart from that position that has been given to you, to mankind in Christ. It's a place that um, the world is a place that actually man was created into. It's a place that the soul of man lives. It's a place that all the storms come to mankind. Mm. Now, in Christ is a different story. Uh, it's a different position. It's not a living soul anymore. It's actually a spirit that lives. Now, when Jesus says, in the world and in me, he's uh, basically trying to uh, put a division between the, two, but between the two and showing that you can either uh, live in the world or in me. Now, when we say mm -hmm. in the world, we don't talk about a planet called Earth or even the universe. It's a place of reality, of consciousness. It's a place of uh, basically awareness. It's a place that our mind lives in. It's a place that our soul lives in. It's a place that uh, we deal with that internal reality. So if our internal reality is based on uh, what we call uh, the world, mm -hmm. we're going to live like the world. We're going to live like anybody else that lives in the world. Now, that means we're going to be impacted and influenced by everything that others that live in this world uh, are already influenced by. So now Jesus says, but in me you will have peace. So what are we having in tribulation? No peace. Mm. Because he says there is a place that actually you can be in tribulation, but then you can 
all of a sudden change into peace. Now we have to see what this tribulation first of all is over and then what that peace actually is. So let's go and look at a couple of verses uh, in uh, Romans chapter 2. If we go to Romans, Paul actually explains this a bit uh, when he's talking about the gospel uh, and he's laying the foundation in the beginning. So in chapter 2, uh, verse 1, he says, Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man. Mm -hmm. So he's talking to man. He's not talking to a believer. He's not talking to a non-believer. He's not talking to uh, anyone. He's just talking to humankind in general. And he says, O oh man, you are inexcusable. Why? He says, uh, for wh whoever you are who uh, judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. So he's talking to humankind that actually have chosen to live in a certain mm -hmm. life and that life is based on a certain judgment. Mm -hmm. That judgment comes from their own understanding, their own perception, their own wisdom, which is gained over the years in the world through tradition and forefathers. Mm -hmm. So a man that lives according to the tradition of forefa forefathers, according to that knowledge and wisdom and discernment um, uh, and counsel, has come to a place that actually has a judgment about everything. And he says, when he has this judgment, he has a sense of right and wrong. Mm. But it's his own right and wrong. That's why uh, he can't actually do what he says is right. And he can't stop doing what is not right. Mm. So now he says, if you live this way, let's see what's the result of this. Look at verse um, 6. He talks about God. He says he will re render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth. Uh, unrighteous, uh, sorry, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man. Mm. Tribulation on every soul of man. So let's uh, go back one step. He says, uh, God gives to every man according to his works. Mm -hmm. Now, he defines what is man's works. He says, if you are self-seeking, so what are we trying to say? Self-seeking. That's exactly what I talked about. Mm. When we live according to, when mankind lives according to his own wisdom, his own perception, his own realization, and his own consciousness, all he knows is self. All he knows is actually that knowledge that through the years mm. he has gained or has been imparted to him by uh, different teachers, whether it be parents or teachers outside of the family. So what is happening? There is a person, a living soul, that his soul is under a uh, basically a knowledge, a wisdom. Now he says, in that place, man is under tribulation. His soul doesn't have any rest. His soul lives still in the curse of the garden that God actually mm. um, uh, pronounced over uh, Adam. He said, you will never have uh, peace. You will never have rest but you will actually eat from the sweat of your uh, face. face. Yeah. Uh, so what is that? It's a place that man lives without the help of God. It's mm. a place that man lives without the grace of God. Mm. It's a place that man separates himself from God and he doesn't have any uh, peace with God. So what did Jesus say? He said, in me you will have mm -hmm. peace. In the world you will have tribulation. So why not coming to me so you can have that uh, peace? So now the thing is, how do we have what causes this peace to come to us? That's right. That's a good question. Yeah. So what is the thing that actually causes this, this tribulation to go away and peace to come? First of all, I want to make sure that we understand that when we say tribulation, we're not talking about um, sickness, That's we're right. not talking about disease, we're not talking about pain, we're not, ta we're not talking about anything that um, 
we must talk because all those things Jesus said I came to set you free from yeah so he came for healing he came for health he came for um, deliverance mm -hmm. so those are not the questions as I said the tribulation is a place that the soul of man is suffering mm. it's a place that the soul of man lives under stress under worry under fear under uh, basically judgment or condemnation mm. the soul is not free is not refreshed it's thirsty he can uh, he's not satisfied he's looking for answer in all mm -hmm. places and also when we were in um, like in ascension night series that we had so we went through the book of revelation and talked about the tribulation there so which we don't have time here to go really deep yeah. in it but uh, when we looked at the parable of the sword and the seed uh, jesus in one place uh, he mentioned the uh, the temptation uh, in one of the category one of the um, um, categories the, of the four categories mm -hmm. of the, the heart that the word of God is basically so there um, so in one in one of them in one gospel Jesus says tribulation and another gospel he says temptation so basically tribulation is really comes it's what exactly you said it's because of the temptation that comes exactly. to man it's there's something that we believe and the temptation comes toward then toward that what we believe to test that and when man thinks that he can do it without God he falls into a tribulation or into that um, a stage of soul exactly. that um, is separated basically from the life of God exactly. right so yeah mm -hmm. exactly because and you know like the question you ask is really good like I think it applies to every mm -hmm single concept that is in the bible that we know the scripture talks about all these things all those promises or there in me there is peace but how can we really have that and receive what is in christ basically yeah just as tribulation is for the soul peace is for the soul also um, so god is changing the condition of the soul out of tribulation right. into peace uh, there is a verse in isaiah i believe 60 maybe 4 or 65 that god says uh I will extend uh, peace to you like mm -hmm. a river. Uh, so um, there is that change that God is actually causing to happen. Now, mm -hmm. let's go to Romans 8, uh, just to show that tribulation is not the will of God for mankind. Look at verse, um, chapter 8, verse 35. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? So what is he saying? He says, what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can tribulation do this? Yeah. Can tribulation set us up, uh, or basically separate us from the love of Christ? Uh, obviously, mm. the author is looking for uh, the answer, no. Yeah. That means nothing can separate. Because right after that, he says, uh, I'm persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ mm. Jesus. So tribulation cannot. So what, what, is, what needs to happen is actually coming out of that tribulation and be in the peace of God. Mm. So now let's go to Matthew chapter 10, uh, just to look at what Jesus said in a uh, basically symbolic language. He used a metaphor mm -hmm. just to explain uh, basically uh, what we say about peace uh, that we need to have. So Matthew chapter 10. Look at verse um, 34. He says, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not com come to bring peace. But John says, in me you will have peace. Mm. So uh, what is he saying? Is this a contradiction? Or maybe uh, actually we have to understand through the Spirit of God what Jesus is trying uh, or actually is expecting us to understand. Uh, if you go back to the scriptures, uh, especially in the book of Jeremiah, God constantly says, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, prophets that uh, they falsely speak peace mm. uh, while their word is not from me. They follow the dictates of their own hearts. Mm. So they are trying to make peace over their soul he says by saying peace he says when there is no peace so there is a place that the heart of man the soul of man is trying to use lies to bring peace to himself mm -hmm. 
But Jesus sa says, I did not come to bring that kind of peace. In fact, right after that, he says, but to bring a sword, mm -hmm. not a peace, but a sword. So definitely he's bringing sword to a place that already there is a peace, but false peace. So through that peace, he can actually mm -hmm. cut through and he can uh, bring a different kind of peace. Now we know what the sword is. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 says the word of God is alive and uh, sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm. The word of God is a sword. So what did Jesus come to bring? The word. And that word takes away the false peace that the soul of man has made with lies. So that um, actually says that sword comes to bring division between spirit and soul. Mm. So what was falsely accepted through a soulish understanding through a soulish or natural wisdom god removes that but through the spirit he brings actually the truth out so in that place the heart of man finally comes to that rest mm. so what is uh, basically living in christ is actually living in his word mm. so if you have his word that word starts uh, bringing a division between lies and the truth and we can understand our identity. We can understand what we were predestined for. We can understand our life is not limited to what we see, what we taste, what we hear, or what we touch. Our life is in Christ. Right. What is in Christ? The truth of God being revealed. Yeah. So in that place, tribulation all of a sudden re is replaced by the peace of God. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to um, chapter... Um, chapter 5 of the book of Romans just to look at both tribulation and peace once again because I want us to see actually uh, tribulation is a place of narrowness mm -hmm. it's a place that the soul of man is uh, pressed in it's a place that it, it it's like let's say you're going through a confined area it's a place that actually very uh, let's say a small hole and you're just going through mm. it it's a place that the soul of man is going through it but uh, the thing is you go through it and you come out mm. so your soul doesn't need to be stuck our soul doesn't need to be stuck in that place that that is a place that our um, soul comes out of mm -hmm. now let's, let's see how this happens look at chapter 5 of Romans it says, therefore, verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. So once again, we have peace with God. Why? Because we are not justified by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are not looking for self-justification. We are not looking for, we are not self-righteous. We actually listen to what God says. How are we justified? He says by faith. But faith in what? What are we trusting in? In the work of God through Jesus Christ on the cross and in resurrection causing the old man to die the new man to mm -hmm. arise and through that the work of God is finished and man enters into his rest mm -hmm. and the prophecy of day seven of Genesis is finally fulfilled mm -hmm. so it's a place that actually the soul of man that was created in let's say day six all of a sudden grows into full maturity of sonship and rests in the love of his father in um, day seven so now here he says therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and not only that but we also mm -hmm. uh, glory in tribulation so now after peace again we have the word <laughs> tribulation so first of all the word glory should be the word boasting it okay. says we boast mm -hmm. in uh, tribulation why because in the past when tribulation would come we would be in death immediately right. but he says we have now realized something that the love of Christ is so huge for me that nothing can separate me from this mm -hmm. so when the all the pressure comes over my soul to cause me to, just as the psalmist says, uh, that it may touch the ground mm. or basically be full of dust. 
and take the nature of the first man, Adam, all of a sudden I realized that no, I'm not that person. I'm not anymore a living soul. I'm not a person that is under weakness. I'm not a person that will give in to depression and hopelessness and discouragement. I am in Christ. I mm. am the child of God. I am justified by faith. It's not up to me. It's not based on my works. It's by His mercy. It's by His grace. So once I realize that I stand in the place that belongs to me, and that is called in Christ. That's right. And in that place, I have peace. Mm -hmm. In me, you have peace. Now he says, I boast in tribulation. It's like, bring it on. Mm -hmm. What else? What do you want to bring over me that uh, try to actually cause me to go into all those negativity? I'm not anymore going to go uh, into those places. Actually, I'm going to walk through this because I know mm -hmm. God is with me. That's right. What can separate me? What can separate me from the love of Christ? He gave his son for me, just as Romans 8 says. How much more, or shall he not also with him give me all mm -hmm. other things? <laughs> so now here he says, but we also boast in tribulation. Why? Why should I boast in tribulation? Right after that he says, because we know. <laughs> so there is something that we know. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Mm. So tribulation is not supposed to cause me to anguish, uh, anguish mm. of soul yeah. anymore. Tribulation is not gonna uh, is not supposed to push me back that I may fall. But actually, tribulation. I realize that when tribulation comes, the word of God is still the same. Mm. I persevere. I go in the same pace that I started. Mm. I continue. I have continuance, I have constancy, I have consistency. I still go on, I still move on. Nothing is changed. We still believe. We still believe. Yeah. So that is anything, any, any promise of God uh, that is there. Mm. So he says, tribulation is not that God all of a sudden changes his promise. No, promise is the same. All the promises of God mm. are yes and amen in Christ. Tribulation or temptation that comes to cause the soul of man to be uh, sorrowful and all of a sudden lose sight of the end of this process. Um, basically, instead of this, all of a sudden the soul realizes, no, uh, God mm. has already proved to me that he loves me. Mm. And I know he loves me and I know that it's not going, he's not going to love me. He has already proven that he loves me mm. and he has told me all things. He has, to, he has revealed to me his will, his purpose, his uh, basically plan, and I know it. Now, when tribulation comes, I persevere. Now, what mm. happens after that? He says, and perseverance prove, uh, brings character and character hope. So look at this. There was a tribulation that ended into hope. Right. So tribulation is not supposed to end to hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Tribulation. Or, let, okay, let me just say <laughs> what the first, um, the word tribulation, I said it already, but let's just uh, emphasize on that. Tribulation simply means uh, narrowness uh, or a place that there is a pressing down. Let's say uh, if I have uh, this phone, it's already uh, free to go wherever direction that he wants to go. But once actually I put my hands on this, I'm putting this under tribulation. Mm. Now, he says, our soul actually uh, in times can come under that pressure, not willingly, but because of the things of right. the world, the way of the world, the lies of the world can come to that place. But that soul still within that tribulation realizes that I can mm -hmm. and come out. So that causes the hope. And he says that hope, mm. verse five, does not disappoint. So in Okay, started with tribulation. He says, no, no hopelessness, no disappointment. Mm. But usually what happens? We lose hope and we, we lose are hope and we, we are disappointed. <laughs> but he says, no disappointment and no hopelessness. Yeah. But what? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given yeah. to us. The love of God has been poured out. <laughs> exactly what we read in uh, John, sorry, Romans chapter 8. He said, mm that uh, I'm 
Can anything can separate can anything separate us from the love of God that is in Christ? Yeah. Shall tribulation exactly. do this? No. So do you see that he says if you see from beginning to the end the love of God constantly with you, when here you come to a place of tribulation, you realize that uh, nothing can change this. Mm-hmm. You move on, you persevere. As you persevere, your character is built, your um, basically hope is increasing mm. and your full uh, awareness that there is something in God that I'm going to have. There is a nature that is being built mm-hmm. in me. There is a uh, promise that I'm receiving. There is an inheritance that I'm getting. There is a healing mm-hmm. that I need that I have been standing on. There is something, a breakthrough, whatever. Um, that all of a sudden re- re- you realize that if I know the love of God right. in Christ, what is the love of God in Christ? Mm. If I realize that he proved his love for me on the cross when actually he declared his eternal mm. purpose, which is man forgiven. Mm. No matter what you have done, forgiven. Yeah. If you realize that, you all of a sudden, finally your soul is free from works of pleasing God. You come to a place that you realize that he is pleased with me right now mm. and I'm a son. And because of that, I can actually have peace with him. So basically, like, it's interesting because this morning um, I was just reading this uh, scripture. Um, I think it was in Isaiah uh, that uh, even though if you walk through the fire, you mm. will not be burned. That's right. And, um, and, and I remembered um, the story of the Daniel and like Daniel's friend and uh, that uh, the King Nebuchadnezzar uh, threw them into the fire and they weren't burnt. Yeah. And instead, the third man, the fourth man uh, showed up uh, in the midst of those three. And when they came out, they, they not only they weren't burnt, but they didn't even smell yeah. the, the smoke of the fire, basically. And it's interesting because, uh, as you said, the tribulation simply comes to um, you know to, uh, to comes against our belief so we believe something like those three uh, Daniel's friends that they believe no we are not going to bow down yeah. to this um, like um, like a statue image. like image that um, you have like King Nebuchadnezzar had made so they believe and I think they, they had already read this scripture yeah. that even though if you walk through the fire you will not be burned and so they believed it. So what happened was then they were in the fire. So they were experiencing tribulation. It was like they were pressing. They were, yeah. um, they were like pressed down. They were pressed down. They were their, their faith was tested. And they could, in any moment of it, they could just say, okay, we're done. And, you know, they lose hope and they lose disappointment. What something was very interesting that always touched my heart when I read that scripture. They tell King Nebuchadnezzar, we know that our God will deliver us Mm -hmm. from your hand. Yeah, that's a good point. And, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to you. That's right. And that's an, that's an interesting part because that right there shows the love of God. It is, uh, like poured into their heart in that moment. And they knew that we love our God and we know he's going to deliver us. But even though he doesn't, we will not bow down. But today, that when we come to Christianity, when we read chapter um, chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus said, after he said, you have tribulation, he said, but rejoice, be happy because I have overcome the world. So in the world is tribulation. And then Jesus says, I have overcome the world. That means he has overcome all the tribulation. That's right. So for us as Christians to be here, what we need to do, it's, it is impossible for the temptation not to come because we are still living in this world. But there is a big difference between us and others that we have found a place in him, that in him we have peace and in him we have joy. In him we, have, we are overcomers. And what we can do is, as Masood read this, that was very interesting what you said, like when, when, we, are in, when we are like a little pressed down, uh, we, we lose hope and we are disappointed. But if we can just keep seeing our eyes and yeah. know that he has promised and he has overcome the world and he will deliver us um, basically from this um, that tribulation. Situation, that this tribulation. Situation. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Even like in John, uh, maybe we can go there, John 14, that um, he again talks about peace, but mm. this time he says, my peace I give you, right. my peace. Now that actually... Um, 
I was reading that a uh, couple of days mm. ago, and it was like one of those moments that my peace. Right. Because why he's saying my peace? Because there are other peace. Yeah. And I said, uh, he already said, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Mm. So he came against a false peace. What is that false peace? It's that m momentary or let's say um, uh, daily uh, hypes that gives us a false peace, but never, uh, you immediately are dried after mm -hmm. that. You don't have that peace anymore. You are again back to, let's say, if there is money coming, you have peace. If money is not there, you don't have peace anymore. <laughs> That's right. But the peace that Jesus talks about it's is above that. any of these things. Because even in uh, Romans 8, he says, he talks about even famine. Mm. So w what about famine? Can famine do anything to us? Can famine separate us from the love of God? Mm -hmm. Now, I understand there is a spiritual aspect to that, but even let's say financially, it should any of those things actually shake us? Uh, now, um, I'm not saying this to say that uh, if we have been in that place to have a sense of condemnation, but what I, I see the scripture is inviting us into is a right. place that man is not any more dependent on anything outside of him to give him peace that's right yeah but actually who is inside of him mm. and he can rely on him to have peace now look at uh john chapter 14 mm -hmm. uh, verse 27 peace i leave with you my peace i give to you not as the world gives do I give you? Do you see? Mm. Not as the world gives. My peace I give you, not as the world gives. That's trying to say the world has a sense of peace. That's right. But he says, what you call peace is tribulation. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Because in chapter 16, verse 33, which we started this mm. uh, mm -hmm. session, uh, he said that in me you have peace in the world tribulation. But here he says, my peace I give you, not as the world gives. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then like right after that says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, so then when that peace is there, there is no fear. Mm. When that peace is there, right. all of a sudden, everything that was on the soul of man mm. is gone. So now that is a great place to live because out of that place of uh, peace many things start to flow mm. <laughs> uh, if I have peace with God who cares who has enmity with me mm. if God and I are both in the same team yeah <laughs> who cares what <laughs> team I'm God. playing against yeah. <laughs> right so if I see God working with me I or I working with God right. toward his purposes his goals his plans then if anything comes let's say if you go to a war uh, two soldiers can go to the same war one can be fearful and afraid and lose heart and draw exactly. back yeah. one the other one could be actually full of courage full of confidence he can go and basically conquer mm -hmm. the land and he can even bring honor to uh, his masters or whatever uh, his country mm -hmm. the uh, authority that he's serving mm -hmm. so it's like it's that thing that we and he says, none of these things are actually by works. It's if we realize the love of Christ, yeah. which always comes back to uh, the place that he laid down his life for us. Mm -hmm. Because that removes every argue, every dispute, every, everything that tries to come and say, no, you're not. No, you're not uh, good yeah. enough. No, you're not. No, you can't have. No, it's not going to happen it actually stops any of those things because now all of a sudden we have another reasoning <laughs> that says if uh, he did not spare his son but he delivered up for us all how much more shall he not give us uh, with him all things right. that's the new reasoning that we have so out of the place of tribulation of the soul in the world into the place of the peace for the soul in Christ and that is only through the word mm -hmm. that reveals actually the love of God for me. So my soul is not anymore like Adam hitting himself, right. but 
he's actually opening himself up to God so that he can have all. And um, one more last thing before we finish the session here is, it's interesting that Jesus puts the peace um, in front of the tribulation. Yeah. So like in him, there is a lot of other things. But why did he bring the peace? Only like one thing out of many things that are in Christ. And then he is just puts that right opposite or in front of the tribulation. Yeah. Because the moment we, you, we start feeling like pressed down or pressure, uh, like pressure to come or that tribulation to come, the first thing that usually happens, we are peaceless. Yeah. <laughs> the thing That's usually true. that happens is that we are freaking out, we are afraid, we don't have hope, we are fearful. And so, but, but it's interesting that right there, Jesus gives us the key to overcome uh, tribulation, it's the peace that we have in Him. Mm -hmm. So if we hold our peace in Christ through the challenges of life, uh, we will be able to overcome every tri tribulation. And, and we see here, as Masood said again, or like Masood said, I just want to emphasize, emphasize on that again, that we are not saying just um, mm, keep having the tribulation until you die. Basically, what um, this is what it is. We have tribulation in the world. No, Jesus said like. Or this is even something God is bringing. This is also yeah, exactly. Because when we read the book of James, James says God cannot yeah. tempt people. Like He cannot tempt anyone. It's he just the way of the world. Comes. That's right. It's just the corrupted nature that came to the world, and as the sons of God, that they have found the right place in Christ, they will start reigning from the place in Him to be able to overcome every tribulation, not to bow down to the tribulation and be devoured by it, but rather than that, uh, holding or bringing the laws and the new rules that they have found from a different realm because they are seated in a different place. So not the place of the earth, but the heavenly place, the place that he has already put all the enemies under his own feet. And now he's working in the life of the sons of God, reigning in them and through them so that they can also bring that uh, overcoming into their own lives and as the sons of God into the world and to bring it to be a solution for many um, issues of the world basically so that's why what we are saying here is um, so uh, the reason we are excited because this tribulation will not end into suffering, into um, like uh, death, into hopelessness. This, the tribulation that comes to us when we start standing in Him, we will learn to overcome that and it will end to victory, into overcoming, into a place that the enemies will be under our feet, basically, right? Exactly. So just wanted to clear that. So do you have anything else? No, I, I just want to say that uh, as Rose said in the beginning, that these sessions are not going to be uh, like in the past that we were doing like two hours kind of videos yeah. that we were going actually through every scripture every right. word every place that let's say the word tribulation or the word mm -hmm. peace was used just to bring a total understanding of that concept uh, i understand that there would be many questions even when you go through this video that what about that verse what about that verse what about the other one and i understand that but let's just go one step at a time um and just to understand that um if we uh, get portions, uh, or let's say if we get one break of this whole building that God is trying to build, right. we can eventually have the building fully built. Okay. So mm -hmm. at this time, let's just go, let's meditate on this. Let's look at all these verses that we have. And let's, that, uh, let's, let's allow that the truth of uh, uh, basically the word of God in uh, that love mm -hmm. that was manifested on the cross and that victory that was manifested in resurrection mm -hmm. uh, kind of fill our heart instead of the lies that we have believed. So That's our right. true identity starts actually appearing, showing itself, be active, and we can exercise who we are. Thank you so much for watching this video. As Masood said, please, if you have any questions, please leave that in the comment section and we will, that's the best place you can reach out to us. Um, and we will always answer any questions or any comments. And also if there is another thing that Jesus have said and you want to know how we can, how we read the scriptures, 
and or you have a question please ask that in the comment section and we will make a video for it um, as we are in this series basically and um, again if you um, like this video or if you are following our ministry please uh, share this video with your friends and family and let them uh, grow a little let them also drink from the water of life let them uh, just be free they might have the same questions that we talked today and just please share with them and um, and like and share and thank you so much for supporting our ministry and until next time the love of God the Father the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed our video today if you did will you do two things number one share with somebody else and number two click subscribe button below you will get notifications every time we release a new video and by subscribing you support us our ministry our message and this channel we really appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet go to perfectedbyblood.com forward slash sign up and sign up you'll get a free ebook called Unveiled Word, a simple guide to understand the Bible. You'll also be notified about new articles about our ministry updates and our upcoming brand new online courses. Make sure to subscribe to our new podcast, Perfected by Blood. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you can find a podcast. It's an exclusive place where we share our thoughts about life, about the Word of God, and our advice for you as you seek to live a transformed life. It's called Perfected by Blood. Make sure you subscribe. And if you're ready to take your life into a whole new level, to go deeper and go bigger in God, make sure you grab my book, The Flood of Mercy, Supernatural Help in Your Greatest Time of Need. It's available on Amazon right now. When you order your copy, you're really supporting our ministry and the message we carry. And you'll also be getting a book that it will reveal to you how you can stop trying to fulfill God's supernatural plan for your life through natural means. Instead, you can receive the power of His mercy through deeper understanding of God's compassionate heart. This book helps you to change your mind, believe in God's goodness, receive His involvement in your day-to-day -day life, and finally, lift up the burdens off of your shoulders. It's called the Flood of Mercy, Supernatural Help in Your Greatest Time of Need. It's available on Amazon right now. Thanks for tuning in.